Thanks for coming to our discussion about the big wave of platform surfing. Uh, I'm Justin Evans. It's great to see you. Uh, Tom mentioned that a year ago, Samsung Ads stood on this stage and presented research about the total TV watcher. That's our name for the group that watches more TV than any other. Uh, we've been thinking a lot about audiences uh, over the last year, and I'm really excited to share some new insights with you uh, about platform surfing. Audiences are watching linear TV, ad-supported streaming, and subscription streaming. They're watching them interchangeably, and they're watching them throughout the day. We're calling that behavior platform surfing, and we think it's critical for advertisers to understand this behavior in today's environment. Because it can seem like that's another new and complicated behavior on the part of the audience that the advertiser has to keep up with, we would argue that if you have the right data, platform surfing presents not just a challenge, but an opportunity for new kinds of reach. And we would also argue that it's not just about reach, it can also be about driving results at a level that we think TV advertisers should find really exciting. I wanted to introduce the acronyms, though, first. The linear TV is not an acronym, therefore, it doesn't really need much of a translation. AVOD, ad-supported video on demand or ad-supported streaming. SVOD, subscription streaming. Audiences are watching them interchangeably and they're watching them throughout the day. But it's a concept that I think uh, can really be helped by a visual. Uh, what we did is we took the three behaviors of linear, AVOD, and subscription-based uh, streaming, and we wanted to look at them on the same scale. So we distilled them down to a metric of time spent per hour per TV. In other words, in any given TV, in any given hour, what format is being uh, watched uh, across all three formats. And we looked at this across a 24-hour cycle. And there they are. Uh, you see the blue line is linear, the green line is ad-supported streaming, and the pink line is subscription streaming. So the first thing we observe when we look at this chart, and I think you'll observe it too, is how active and consistent all three behaviors are over the course of the 24-hour cycle. The second thing we observed is that linear still dominates. It has the highest time spent, uh, particularly starting around uh, 11 a.m. and peaking at around 9 p.m. But another observation I think is equally important, which is how tightly coupled AVOD and SVOD are over the course of a 24-hour cycle. It's like, it's like this DNA strand uh, throughout the day. Even though AVOD is a little higher in the morning and SVOD is a little higher in the evening, almost like it's mimicking those prime time linear behaviors, the two are in a virtual dead heat throughout the course of the day, which is an interesting uh, metric that we'll come back to. So from an advertiser's perspective, you have this dynamic and abundant uh, video environment, and that's great news for advertisers uh, in video. But that's the aggregated view. Let's dig down a little bit and talk about some of the metrics underneath. As we get into that, I think it's important to acknowledge what we're talking about here. We're talking about complementary reach to linear. And this is not the first time the industry has tackled this problem. For those of us who remember, we started in digital. And the beautiful thing about digital to complement linear is that it's truly cross-platform. This is a different behavior from linear. The challenge we had was in measurement. It was really hard to get and to scale unified measurement across the two to get a deduplicated view. Recently, there's been a lot of conversation about linear addressable complementing linear. And there, the idea is we're going to identify the light linear viewer, we're going to hit them with linear addressable, and that's going to be our complementary play. So the good news there is that because both are on the same platform, you can measure them both together, and that's great. 
what might be a challenge to that thesis is that because they're on the same platform, it's not really cross-platform. So I would argue we're now in a new space where OTT uh, allows us to achieve cross-platform advertising and drive unified measurement. And we're able to do that through the data set known as ACR, or automatic content recognition. Most of you are familiar. ACR measures content, and it measures ads. It measures linear TV, streaming on apps, and streaming on connected devices. In Samsung's case, we're fortunate to have 45 million US smart TVs, which by our estimates is 60% of the ACR market. The insights we get out of a data set that large really cause us to challenge a lot of our preconceptions, and it's here where we can, where we can dig into those reach dynamics. So we're going to play a little interactive game. Uh, the statement, the, the preconceived notion is linear dominates viewing and streaming is an emerging behavior. Who thinks this is a myth? Who thinks this is a fact? You're not really playing, which is not fair. But. <laughs> It's a small sample size. Um, <laughs> uh, the fact is actually somewhere in between, so you're right to keep your hands down. Um, all video viewing, 55% uh, of all video viewing that we measure is linear. So linear is higher. Linear is the uh, dominant mode. However, that also means that streaming is 45% of all viewing. That is much higher than we were expecting to see in this analysis. So I think streaming has graduated beyond an emerging behavior into one that's approaching parity. All right, you can play this time, right? <laughs> Linear versus streaming is a zero-sum game. Who believes this is a myth? Who believes this is a fact? All right, I think I would agree with uh, the majority. We do see some polarization. We see that 26% of, of our platform only watches linear. We see that 30% only watches through streaming. But we see 44% watches both, and we're seeing this group grow. A year ago, we ran these numbers, and that 44% that was 38%. And it's all coming from linear only. So this middle group, the, the watching both group, is important because not only are they growing, but they are what we call the total TV watcher, and they are watching 50% more content than those other groups. So I think this really debunks the myth that it's a zero-sum game. It shows that linear and streaming are not only inter intertwined, but they're integrated. All right, this is the last time, and I really want you to like... Uh, the, the, the preconceived notion is, from an advertiser or agency standpoint, there's not enough ad-supported streaming inventory. I can't do a meaningful campaign in an ad-supported streaming environment. Myth? Fact? OK, I'll go with the crowd on this one, too. According to what we see, 61% of streamers are watching in ad-supported environments. In the time spent within streaming, we're seeing 40% of all that time spent going towards streaming. So this is great news for advertisers who want to reach cord cutters and cord nevers. All right, so we've talked a lot about reach. I think it focuses the mind to talk about results, though. That's the dollars and the cents. So let's get into a case study about platform surfing, about how a, a, an advertiser really managed it beautifully. So we're talking about an automotive OEM. Tactically, they're doing a broad video buy between linear TV and OTT. They're trying to sell cars and their KPI is website visitation. They flag certain pages on their site to stand for uh, the customer going down the purchase funnel. And to frame this in terms of the platform surfing challenge, what we did was divided up our user base into thirds. Those who watch a lot of linear, those who watch a medium amount of linear, and those who watch a uh, small amount of linear, light linear. We're going to leave this up here for a reference point because we're going to look proportionally at how the conversions fell out among these populations. 
So when we look at linear and the conversions driven by linear, we see that 69% of all the conversions caused by linear were in the heavy bucket, and 29% were in the medium bucket. What does this tell us? It tells us that linear is doing what it does great, which is driving scale and driving conversions among the heavy and medium group. But where all of this comes down, literally, is in the light linear group. Only 2% of the conversions fell within the light linear bucket. And this is why complementary reach to linear has been a years-old problem in the industry. Because when you spend all this money in linear, you still get these kinds of results in the light linear group. And keep in mind, this is a third of the population. So when you add OTT, you see a much more consistent delivery. 32% in heavy, 41% of the conversions in medium, and 27% <clears throat> of the conversions in the light linear group. So this had a major impact on the results that the advertiser got in the third of the population that watches light linear. How much of an impact? In one month, they drove 1,378 conversions, which is a lot of car buyers, and that's 3.2 times the amount of conversions in that group that linear was able to drive. We'll quickly look at these same results through the lens of Lyft, and I think this sums it up. Linear was able to drive 19% Lyft, so that's exposed versus unexposed conversions. Those of, of us who are in the, uh, in the research biz, we know that 19% is a fantastic result. You're always happy to see something as high as 19%. But when we added OTT, the whole campaign drove 143% Lyft. How is that possible? OTT was targeted, and it was reaching those uh, hard to access light linear viewers. So in summary, I really love this case study because it captures all of the themes that we've been talking about. It shows linear and OTT working together. It shows them reaching streamers through AVOD in a way that complements linear brilliantly in this case. And of course, for the geeks, it measures results across platforms in a unified way. So to sum up, uh, we're looking at an important new audience behavior, which is platform surfing. Platform surfing does seem new and complicated, but it also represents reach opportunities, especially when you see 40% of streaming time happening in AVOD. And it's not just about reach, it's also about results. In this case study, uh, the 143% lift we saw the advertiser achieve by using both. <laughs>